Now, we turn to the upcoming elections uh, in Africa, beginning with what we just mentioned, Zimbabwe. Joining us now with more details is our anchor at large, Demi Akimokaliele. Welcome, Demi. Well, thank you very much, Vincent. The political spotlight shines on Zimbabwe next week as the nation braces for a major test of its democracy. Next Wednesday's long-anticipated general elections will bring significant changes. Despite questions regarding the country's preparedness for elections, citing short notice and absence of key reforms, on July 31st, Zimbabwean voters head to the polls. President Robert Mugabe has reigned for 33 years, the last five under a tense power-sharing arrangement with opposition rival Morgan Changirai of the Movement for Democratic Change. Now there are indications that many people want Mr. Mugabe out and a new era in. We don't want any more super presidents want presidents who are accountable, want constitutional and rule of law. These are the things I think is all way. And above all, we also want to see national economic recovery. Other members of Zimbabwe's civil society and political groups weighed in on the issue at an event co-sponsored by the National Endowment for Democracy in Washington, D.C. Five candidates are contesting, but the primary focus is on President Mugabe and Prime Minister Changirai. Most people want peaceful yet credible elections sanctioned by the Southern African Development Community. Let's not have an election of personalities. Let's have an election of processes. If we have gone into this election and Mugabe wins, if we go in and Morgan wins, and the process is the same process which should have been, be it. We don't want to have an, an economy held to ransom because of power. The United States says credible elections will greatly improve U.S. relations with Zimbabwe. We deeply respect the sovereign will of the Zimbabwean people and will work with any government chosen in peaceful and credible polls that represent the will of the Zimbabwean people. In that event, we are prepared to consider steps to further roll back sanctions and expand trade and investment. While hoping for a different election from the past, analysts remain cautious. It's a strong risk that uh, the language that seeks to, to come out even from SADC and other election observer missions that are already in the country, they are speaking more to peace rather than the benchmarks of credibility, freeness and fairness of the elections. Analysts say ZANU-PF's declining support among voters could spur a rise in the use of military power. ZANU-PF is all formal you know, liberation movements, state, you know, captured state power. And they went the second stage of transforming state institutions for power coercion. And that is what we have. Human rights defenders say although violence appears down, it really is not. There's a, a lot of strategic targeting of organizations and in, individuals who mobilize people, who educate uh, voters ahead of elections. For a peaceful post-election period, panelists urge the African Union and SADC to keep pressure on Zimbabwe to reform. It's come up with very good resolutions on Zimbabwe, but has failed in its implementation or enforcement of its positions. For many pro-democracy groups, no matter who wins, the work to strengthen Zimbabwe's democracy must continue. It doesn't actually really matter whether MDC wins or ZANU-PF wins. Our fight is protecting our vote, mothering our vote, and making sure that nobody's going to take us for granted. Well, joining us now to talk more about the anticipated election outcome is Oswell Bina, president of the Association of SADC Chambers of Commerce and Industry and also a member of the National Executive Council of the Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce. So happy to have you on our show, Mr. Bina. I know you're in D.C. just for a short while. You were speaking yesterday at the National Endowment for Democracy. Thank you. So what is your anticipation and expectation of Zimbabwe post this very crucial election? from a private business perspective. Thank you, Ndimiyake. I think what we need to start off from is to celebrate that we've gone four years of inclusive government with peace and a lot of effort on the economy. Mm -hmm. And we are going into this election really to make sure that this process is concluded so that private enterprise start to function in Zimbabwe. What is our expectation? Government must come back to work and start creating the institutions, not personalities, institutions mm -hmm. that will make sure that they will seize, they are seized with the work of developing the economy of Zimbabwe. And you're saying that could happen under President Mugabe if he's re-elected, Mr. Changirai, or any of the other three candidates? The reason why people go into an election, Dimiaga, is to be able to choose their leadership. And we are not going to seize ourselves on personalities, but processes. Mm -hmm. So whatever the outcome, as long as it's agreeable and acceptable, we will work with anybody that comes to the fore. As a private sector, we 
are worried that Zimbabwe is becoming a nation of electioneering. So coming to this process de defined by SADC and AU and concluding this political question is actually a celebration on, my, on our part. So tell me from an economic perspective, how will things turn around? So obviously we're talking about time. Institutions just don't develop overnight. What is your anticipation of that process? We have been availed with a very good opportunity. We've just adopted our constitution, which is the supreme law of the country. Overwhelmingly though, we now are going into a legislative uh, realignment re process. This is an opportunity for Zimbabweans now to converge in terms of creating the institutions necessary for what they aspire to, to, you know, to achieve as a nation. But there's so much to do. 85% unemployment or thereabouts. You have a big deficit of foreign direct investment. You hear about the impact of the diamonds that should be contributing to the treasury that are not. I mean, what, what, is, your, what is your feeling about how, this, how do you get those 85% employed? How do you get the diamond money channeled into the right means so that it benefits the people? To me, okay, Zimbabwe's case is actually a very interesting case. Those that are in the academia must really study Zimbabwe carefully. We have defied the economics textbook. From 2000 up to now, mm -hmm. our statistics don't really speak into what we are today. We believe that there is a lot of scope in terms of the informal economy that is in Zimbabwe. And that scope is speaking largely, is believed to be speaking largely to the three to four billion that we can't account in the treasury. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of the creation of institutions, it will also enable us to then become more accountable as Zimbabweans. It will enable us to be, become more focused. You know, the creation of a national vision, a national trajectory that will span 24, 20 to 40 years. So that's what we expect to do. What we heard um, Ms. Shannon Smith talking about re-engagement of the U.S. To, by, with Zimbabwe, dropping sanctions or lifting some sanctions and trade and investment boosting. Is that uh, something you're excited about? Yes, no. Yes, in the context that um, I think there is need for private enterprise in the U.S. and private enterprise in, the, in, in Zimbabwe to start engaging seriously. And U.S. foreign policy must speak into creating an enabling environment in that regard. When we went into the inclusive government, we expected the sanctions which have been blamed for all the excuses we have found happening within the four years in terms of meeting the desired trajectory to have been lifted earlier so that we have a more functioning inclusive government. Mm -hmm. But I think we have left it too late. But now, because of that position, we need now to see the U.S. really coming in and ensure that we then talk about economic opportunities together as two different nations. Well, thank you so much for joining us and uh, giving us your insights on that. The and uh, when you get back to Zimbabwe, we will be calling you to tell sure. us what happens sure. after the elections. That's Oswell uh, Bina, and he's the president of the Association of the SADC Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And he joined us here on Africa 54.